Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and as you can see we're starting where we left off and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about loops so as you can see everything's still the same uh, this still looks the same okay so what are loops well basically well, what if you have a piece of code that you would like to have executed multiple times well you don't want to just have that code printed out again and again in here uh, for two reasons one it's uh, more work for you and two, if you copy and paste the code again and again in here, then what will happen is the application, the file size, will be larger, and uh, eventually your application will run slower, and the user won't like that. And if worse comes to worse, they'll want to, they'll, they're going to want a refund, and well, that's not good. So, do you have to use loops with list boxes? No, and you almost never will. Um, I, I'm not quite so sure with Visual Basic as other languages, which you almost never use list boxes with them. There's plenty of ways to use uh, loops, but I'm going to be using a list box just so I can. It's easy for me to show you how many times a loop executes. But anyways, uh, let's figure out how to create a loop. So let's say we want a whatever you type in this inbox. What if we want this to be printed an X number of times in this list box? What we can do is, well, let's create a loop. So the first one I'm going to show you is the do while loop. So there we go. And then here, inside the parentheses, goes an expression. So first, I'm going to have to create a variable, and you'll see why. Dim i as integer. And the reason why I call it i is because most textbooks usually introduce loops using i as an increment or decrement, either way. And uh, so do while i is less than 10. You know what? Make it easier. I'll make it 5. Then I'll click enter. And there we go. So all the ex uh, all the code that executes will go in between the do while and the loop itself. Uh, so let's type out let's say list collection dot items dot add whoops dot items dot add and within the parentheses, we'll want to type in the uh, this right here, input. And there we go. So I click save, and there we go. This should be, oh, one more thing. I should have uh, almost forgot, because that would have been bad. Uh, as you can see, uh, I has not been initialized yet, so we need to do that. The reason why you shouldn't initialize an increment like this uh, until you are inside the subroutine and so it goes back to zero every time they click the button and that's very important so that they can that they're able to start over every time they execute this piece of code so I will be at zero but w won't it always be zero as it goes through here that's true and that is what's called an infinite loop and basically your application will crash so we, we will need to increment this variable and you can also decrement it as well, make it i minus equals. But if you do that, make sure that this is backwards, make it i is greater than, and make sure the variable is greater. So that's, otherwise it will be infinite uh, as well. So let's uh, test this out, see how it works. So I'll put in high, and there you go, high is in there five times. Went through there five times, added the item. And that's why I kept this as clear instead of individual item removal. So you can get rid of all of them at, at once. So that's a lot, lot nice. Okay, so let's use a, well, uh, a better example. So what if we would like uh, the powers of a certain number, let's say 5. What if we want all the exponents of 5, 5 to the 0 power, 5 to the 1st power, 5 to the 2nd power, uh, as many as we want to appear there? Well, there's a few variables we're going to have to get through. But first, let's change this to 5. And to the power of, well, since we're starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, we just want that to be i, right? Because, well, it's going to increment the way we want it. So everything will pop up nicely. And what if we want to be able to control how many times it executes? Well, we can make this a number, so we can throw in input right here, right? And basically, what we type in here will be the number of times it executes, right? Well, not quite. As I mentioned in the last tutorial, this will always be a string. Whatever you type in here will always end up being a string. And that's why input here has to be equal to string. And you can't just put c int in front of this 
because option strict will disallow that. So how do we go about doing that? Well, what you can do is create a new variable. I'll call it input underscore conv as integer. And the conv is just short for conversion. You can call it whatever you'd like. And I'll create or I'll uh, initialize the variable down here. And I'll set it equal to c int and then input. So then the variable will be changed. So then this will have to be con. And the reason why that's an integer is because you won't want, you know, five to the and th this is an integer because you don't want it to be uh, five to the three point four power. That's just weird. And you want to make sure it does not loop. That's another thing I didn't mention. Make sure this is an integer, just so no weird thing happens where it will loop three point four times because that'll just mess up. Uh, so make sure the i is an integer here. And for this example, make sure, uh, well, yeah, just that's an integer. So I think everything there should work. So let's try executing this. So I'll click Add and type in a string. How many times do you want it to go through? Let's have it go through three times. And there you go, it went through three times. Five to the zero power, five to the first power, five to the second power. You can click, click Add if you want it to go four times instead. So it goes all the way to five to the third power, and you can just remove all of it. So that's really, really nice. And yeah, that's just a, I guess that's a decent example to show you in a non-project video on, uh, on loops. So this was the first loop, and I would like to show you some other loops and some alternative forms. So the first one is the do while, and this example uh, was what's called a pretest. And basically what that means is it tests the expression before executing code. So basically a pretest, which is how we wrote this here, uh, it will always evaluate the expression first before ever trying to execute this code. So what you can do is do what's called a post test. Uh, executes whoops, code at least once. This is true. Uh, so allow me to show you the syntax for a post text. So I'll cut this and I'll paste it here basically. So it says do this. The application is not going to question that. It is going to do that code. It will. And that's, then it'll check the expression. So even if this is false to start with, it will still execute this at least once. And as you can see here, it should execute the code just the same. So I'll throw in five and there you go, does it five times. Still works. Okay, so well that's it about that. So the next one I want to show you is the do until. So actually I'm gonna cut this, then paste it back up here, and change this to an until. And basically the difference between a do while and a do until is do while executes code while expression is true and the do until is not much different actually um, executes code until expression is true okay I, I saw I typed that out wrong false there you go uh, and this makes sense uh, the do while executes code uh, expression Oh, excuse me, while it's true. Yeah, that is... Um, oh, see, I, I <laughs> look, while and until, I, I, I got mixed up here. So, um, I'm, let me change this. Until the code is false, and I'll explain this in a moment, and until expression is true. Okay, so the do while loop, as you solve the do while, it'll check to see if the expression is true, and it'll keep doing it until it's false. The do until is just the opposite it'll check to see if it's false. If it is false, then it will execute it and it'll keep executing it until it's true. And usually the difference in the syntax is you use an equals sign. So if this is equals, uh, then it's going to be false, right? Because when we first go through it, i will be zero and it will not be equal to whatever we type in. Well, it could be. It could be. Uh, so allow me to execute this. And if I click add and I do you know do it four times, does it four times? If I make it zero, it didn't do it at all, uh, which would make sense anyways, because even if we had it zero, it still wouldn't. 
And you know what? Let's make it less then. Let me show you the difference in action. Because it's going to be true right off the bat. So let's type in, I don't know, 5. And it was invalid. Didn't work. So that's cool. Yeah, so make sure you always have this out there. Uh, so I think that's uh, all I wanted to show you with that. Okay, so uh, do until also has these guys right here. So I'll cut this. Oh, sh whoops. Um, paste. Oh, man. Control Z, Z, Z. There we go. Copy. Uh, I love the Control Z. And it has the very same, same stuff. So you can uh, cut this and paste, and it will work just the same. And that's the post test, so we'll always do it at least once. Now there's one more type of loop I'd like to show you, and that's the for next. And this has a bit of an odd syntax to it. So basically, for this one, we want to get rid of this. And then the syntax is for, and then you type out the variable i is equal to then wherever you would like it to start so I'll put it zero and then type in two whoops and then where, whenever you want it to stop so you can make it any kind of number I'll, you know what I'll just make it four I could just use our little input you know what I should I should just use our little input con there we go um, loop must be preceded by a matching do whoops For oh whoops that's the that's the little syntax. Um, the reason why it said loop it was saying that there was a problem with the loop here because it had to be a do up here. Uh, and then you don't put do there you put next. And then what you do there is you type out the variable that you would like to have incremented. So if you type in i it will automatically increment the i for you. And what's our little error here? I, I'm sure that's fine. So let's run this application and I don't know let's let's do it three times see how it works and oh whoops we started with zero uh, until three so it did zero so this was a little different because it started this with zero what happened is it went in there first as zero then one then two then three so it, the big difference is here it said um, it, it uh, a little hard for me to explain this is like an equals sign so it kept doing it even when it was equal to that. Since it was not a less than, it's an equals. I know this is, doesn't mean equals, but it included that last number. Uh, as opposed to before, when we did the less sign, it does not include that last one. And that's why I did it one additional time. So Now, believe it or not, you can actually decide how many steps it increments. Uh, before, we had... Uh, you know, we, we did i plus equals 1 or something, and you could have changed it to 2 or 3 as well in those other loops. In order to do that in here, because it's not as clear, afterwards, you type out step, and then how many times you want it to increment. So let's do it t 2. So if I click save, and then I run the application, uh, how many times did I do it? 4. Click 4. And now it does it one less time, because it did it the, it did the first so it did it when it was zero, then it did it when it was number two, and then it did it when it was number four. Does that make sense? Because I typed in four. So it did it when it was zero, and then it did it when it was two, and then it did it when it was four. So that worked. Uh, so, yeah, and I, I hope that was clear for you. Uh, because it includes when it's zero, and then, so it went in three times. Uh, and that's about it for this tutorial. I, uh, this last one, this for loop, the for loops, in my opinion, in all programming languages, are always the bit more the tricky ones to understand. But, um, but yeah, I, I hope this was a, a useful tutorial for you. Uh, you guys already have that written down, so I'll just go down a little bit to this. And uh, I hope this is uh, very useful because loops are uh, very helpful in, in anything, uh, in the real world, homework, just anything. And uh, I'll see you next time.